Um, hello, my name is G. I'm an artist and a designer based in Tokyo, and uh, my work looks at the intersection of traditional craft media like paper, especially, um, and electronics and contemporary technologies. So actually, I, I um, didn't know that I was interested in electronics for a long time, but um, I was always obsessed with paper. So I started making origami um, when I was three, and what I would do is I would look at the origami books, and I couldn't read, so I'd look at the pictures and just follow the pictures to make the origami balloon or bird or whatever. And I loved it because um, I could take a fine paper everywhere you know it's cheap and it's accessible and I could use it to make toys for myself so um, that's why I kind of fell in love with paper super early um, by the time I made it to college I was studying mechanical engineering because I really love to see the way things moved <laughs> like um, the way materials behave and how we can build more complex things out of that and it was actually during a summer internship um, during college that I uh, met my future advisor Leah Beakley and her assignment to me um, was to use craft materials and conductive electronic materials to make uh, paper crafts that were also sensors and um, basically functioning electronic components and it was by through doing that using like conductive paint to paint a circuit on um, like to, to create like a, a pop-up book that could glow and move that I realized that holy crap if I add electronics to my paper craft the paper craft can suddenly like move and glow and do all this stuff that it couldn't do before and that's when I fell in love with electronics because um, as a tool it allowed me to do more stuff than I could before with just plain paper and mechanisms so that I guess was in college and um, Interestingly, working with electronics also got me into code because using coding, programming your electronics, you can start making things do like automatic stuff or compute or think in, in some ways like, um, you know, AI does today in a way. <laughs> um, so, so that's kind of what opened the doors for me, seeing that electronics could allow me to make artworks that I could never do before. Um, it was really powerful. Um, I guess one, one thing that I will share about that also is that I had taken an electrical engineering course in college before, and so I knew the theory, but when I finally used the electronics theory that I knew before to make something, that's when I was like, oh my gosh, all this knowledge that I just kind of put in my head is now suddenly useful. And so it was a really powerful feeling. I guess when we are able to use something that we've learned towards something that we care about, it's like it's like this magical click, you know, happens. And I got to experience that. So the original dandelion piece was actually inspired by a workshop. So during my master's at MIT, I, my uh, research was specifically on paper electronics and sharing it with people from broad backgrounds to see what different types of um, people would make using this new craft plus electronics medium. And during one of the workshops, a PhD student ne named Jesse Thompson and her partner Zach Berta um, they, Jesse was really interested in plants, and so all of her projects were plant and flower related. Um, and during one session, we were working with um, sensors, specifically microphones, which can detect sound and wind. Like when you blow into a microphone, it can sense that. And they came up with this idea of creating a dandelion poster that you can blow on because a dandelion is a, a, a plant that detects sound. So um, that was kind of where the idea of a dandelion came from. And they made this really sweet poster called um, What Makes a Weed Not a Flower, which is very thoughtful if you think about it. Um, and for me, at the same time, I was also really interested in Chinese ink painting. So I'm Chinese American, I was born in China and I moved to the US when I was five. And I was really interested in con connecting with my own culture. 
So I started studying that as a medium um, with my collaborator, Brian Chan, and so he taught me kind of the technique. And so as I learned painting, and then this beautiful idea of like a dandelion that you can blow on um, came from Zach and Jesse, those two kind of came together and I created this larger version of the dandelion painting. And now as an educator, I like to use that uh, story um, as an example of why it's so lovely and so important for people of all perspectives to be able to use technology and programming circuits um, as a medium because, you know, when we have these different perspectives like uh, Jesse's and Zach's, we're able to figure out these new um, these new ideas like this, this magical dandelion that, you know, maybe wouldn't have existed if we only asked an electrical engineer what they would do, you know? Maybe. It's, it's hard to say. But I do believe that uh, the more diverse um, the people making technology, the more diverse our technologies would be. So um, that is kind of the narrative that comes to mind for me when I think about, um, when I think about the dandelion painting. And the other thing is, I guess, uh, from a materials perspective, I really like building circuitry that is different from what we think about, circuitry that you can see. So um, in this case, not only does the circuit work to, you know, detect when you're blowing on the flower and turn on the lights, um, the circuit itself is also a, an image. It's its own drawing because um, when I put down the tape, it's, it's all put down by hand. Um, it's like I'm drawing with the tape. So you'll notice that the tape follows the form of a flower um, and um, and like kind of the landscape. So I, I want to kind of play with I, this idea that, you know, wires are lines and lines make images and we can make, you know, functioning active images if we make drawings with circuitry. Um, and it's not something that we just have to hide away in a, in a plastic box like we do with our traditional consumer electronic devices. Um, so those are kind of some thoughts around around there. Um, so it's, it's shifted, it's very different. So back uh, when I was um, experimenting a lot, like making the dandelion painting, um, I was very interested in materials because um, I was really excited about exploring what new techniques I could come up with by making novel combinations of paper and conductive materials like paints or, or like um, muscle wire, which changes shape when you heat it up. Um, so for a while, I was just really interested. What I would do is I would just try to play around with the materials um, and see what they would do. And when something interesting, like an interesting technique or phenomenon happens, then I would kind of create a piece around that that showcases that phenomenon in an interesting way. It was kind of like um, like having a conversation with the materials and then like at some point being charmed by something it said and then like t taking that as kind of the inspiration. Um, nowadays, I seem to like almost come from a slightly opposite approach, which is that now I'm really interested in exploring themes and kind of um, ideas and I don't really have a clear idea of what I want to make um, but I do have kind of in in my mind like all the techniques of you know how to draw or fold paper or build a circuit or programming um, a piece of code like all of those are techniques that I can draw upon to then do tell the story that I want to tell but now you know it, it's kind of yeah, it comes in an opposite direction. But at the same time, I think for both of these, I don't exactly know what I'm going to be making at the beginning. It's kind of this journey where I discover things and, and kind of I collage those concepts or techniques together until at the end I'm, I arrive with something that I'm, I'm satisfied with. Um, but yeah, in, in that way, I guess, whether I start with materials or whether I start with a concept, it's all kind of like a conversation somehow. Um, so that's kind of a process. So Chibitronics is a company that I started um, out of my PhD at the Media Lab at MIT. And I was basically researching 
I researched all these different techniques for making paper electronics, um, you know, all these techniques for blending craft and circuitry. Then I wanted to share this. I wanted to share this with as many people as possible because it's so fun. And and it, it, it makes, um, I found it makes a kind of learning circuits and coding a little bit more friendly and accessible. And so my research was kind of sharing. How do, how do I share? How do I teach this technique with people? And I came up with a toolkit involving uh, circuit stickers. So a circuit sticker is actually a, a thing that feels like a sticker, but it's actually a functioning um, circuit board, a flexible circuit board like an LED light or a sensor with conductive um, adhesive on it so that when you stick it down onto your paper circuit, it works. You don't have to solder or or plug anything sharp or clip anything. You just stick it down like a regular sticker and um, it'll do its thing. So that uh, toolkit um, was kind of my way of packaging paper circuits in a, in a friendly way. Um, and, and so that's kind of why I started the company. I wanted to get the toolkit out so that I can share paper circuits with um, teachers crafters, artists, designers, kids, and, and you know, that's kind of why it's out there. And one thing that I've learned is that, um, you know, it's not enough just to make the tool. You also, uh, especially if it's a completely d new tool, you also need support resources to share how do you even use this tool. It's kind of like, you know, you might have a, like a paint and a paintbrush, but you also need someone to teach you how to paint. So that's why we also created um, the circuit sticker sketchbook and other books that um, kind of walk learners, readers through the paper circuit process. Um, and one of the other innovations is that we actually put templates that you um, you can put tape right on the pages of the book and stickers right inside the book um, to build a working circuit. And because it's a template, you just follow the lines, you follow where it says to put the sticker, and it kind of it's it's basically like a coloring book except instead of color you are coloring it in with the circuit and then when you're done coloring there, there's like a functioning circuit on the page um, and so it kind of guides you through and then there's also open-ended activities that ask you to design your own circuit so that you know once you're comfortable coloring you can try drawing your own drawing so, so to speak <laughs> um, so that's kind of the idea behind GBtronics oh and a question that I that I get asked a lot is what is Chibitronics? Um, and basically, uh, Chibi is kind of small and cute in Japanese, and Tronics is just part of electronics. So I put those two together because I wanted to make electronics friendly and cute and kind of fun because um, oftentimes when people think of electronics, it's like the scary, dangerous thing, right? And I wanted it to be the opposite of that. It's fun. It's friendly. It's, you know, anyone who wants to try making electronics can. It doesn't have to be intimidating. Um, so that's why Chibitronics. I am um, looking at, again, new techniques for blending paper with electronics um, with a focus on kind of storytelling. So how might we tell stories in new ways using this medium? What new stories can we tell? Um, I'm based in Tokyo these days, so one of my goals is to learn about kind of traditional paper making and paper craft because it's such a huge part of the culture here. Um, and in terms of concept, we're like in a very strange time right now um, because of COVID-19 going around and kind of we're all like isolating. I've been really thinking a lot about kind of this idea of connection and empathy and kind of being alone and being together in like virtual spaces and I'm I'm trying to think about kind of new ways that we can connect or disconnect um, in in this context and I don't really know <laughs> what will come out of that but but that's something that I'm really interested in because I feel like our world is changing very rapidly and there's going to be a lot of new questions um, and new New, but new answers and new possibilities as well. And so, you know, I'm in particular interested in kind of sharing and connecting, like with my education work. Um, and so I'm just kind of researching that and thinking about maybe how these physical friendly materials, but with a sprinkle of technology, 
may kind of connect us in, in, in new ways. So it's not really baked yet, but those are the questions that I'm uh, asking recently. Um, so I guess that's it. Thank you so much. I am really excited um, to be part of this exhibition. <laughs> Take care.